Welcome back to The Treehouse, We're the Fallen Fruit, and today we're offering a little special episode. We're going to be interviewing Stephanie Genese, one of our members of The Fallen Fruit, and we're going to be starting to ask Stephanie some questions. We want to get to know her, and we want to share how awesome she is with you. Thanks, guys. (laughs) So, Stephanie, do you want to tell us a little bit about um about yourself and how you got into I mean Stephanie she's into a lot of things she's into poetry politics tarot and a lot more so we want (laughs) to know a little bit more yeah so my name's Stephanie Janese hello everyone um I grew up with a single mom in Lorain Ohio which is if you're not familiar kind of like a steel industry town um lots and lots of puerto ricans there big also like mexican community Um, but it is the place where we have an international festival every year because apparently we also have a lot of polish folks hungarian so it's dope because every summer there would be like this big melting pot festival and you could try all these different foods um but yeah that's where i grew up with my mom my parents were divorced early on uh, went to public school, did my thing, regular, typical 90s kids shit. So <laughs> uh, grew up loving hip hop. And I think what actually got me into poetry was originally my love for hip hop and like listening to rappers that could really tell a story like Nas is my all time favorite rapper. So listening to the play on words, how he was able to conduct like an entire story, almost like a hood fairy tale or um, saga through a lot of his albums. And same thing with like Jay-Z, um, Biggie, Tupac, all those rappers who came out in that era. Um, I would spend most of my time either reading books, uh, trying to write stories or recording mixtapes off the radio. <laughs> so, nice. A little bit about me. Um, didn't. Went to community college because that's what happened and (laughs) didn't finish, uh, ended up getting pregnant at the age of 21 with my first son, um, Giovanni. And so then it was mom life. His father and I were together for that time. Um, Ended up going to school to get my medical assisting degree, which I completed with honors from a school that's no longer open. And that was while I was pregnant with my second son, Rocco. So I had him at the age of 23. While you were uh, in school? While I was in school. Wow. And then graduated from that program, never worked in the field because, you know, I just don't know what I want to do. Um, God bless my parents, love them. But my dad came here in his 20s from Italy. So he was just working in the same steel mill. Uh, he's about to retire from that exact same steel mill next year. Wow. Yeah. So was just, you know, trying to navigate himself in this new language, new environment, also having children. He was married prior, so I have two older sisters from that relationship. Then my parents got together, had me, then they got divorced by the time I was like three. Uh, And then my dad remarried, and I have a younger brother and a younger sister. Uh, My mom never remarried. It's just been her and I chilling until I left at age 18, because that's what you do, I guess. But um, no, I uh, ended up getting divorced, got married to my baby daddy, and then we got divorced, and then I've just been kind of on this road of like, what do I want to do with my life? Um, Yeah, didn't have a lot of options when we got divorced. I didn't have a job, didn't have much money to my name, um, didn't know how to do much besides like drive and parent children. Um, so yeah, ever since then, it's kind of been a quest to find out what I want to do and... Well, you're making it sound like (laughs) having kids is like, oh, that's all I know how to do. But I don't know, I, for someone who hasn't done that, I mean, it seems like momhood takes a lot. It does take a lot and it taught me a lot. I think that's the biggest lesson is that, um, having children takes you out of yourself and thinking about you know, the community at large and the world at large. So I think that's why, like, I ended up getting into nonprofit work and doing community activism and why my writing talks a lot about um, those kind of topics and themes as well. That's what I'm curious to know. Like, (laughs) it it explains kind of why you're into, like, the poetry and the writing. I want to know what prompted or kind of nurtured the edge that you have. Because you, (laughs) I love the fact that you say what you feel 
politically correct or not, right? Like you just you just give it to them the way that you you mm-hmm. feel it. So where did that come from? I think maybe Catherine can attest to this that it might be my <laughs> Sagittarian nature, very blunt, very truthful. Um, I don't know. Ever since I was younger, I just didn't understand almost the politics or etiquette of, you know, why we don't do or say certain things. I had a problem when I was younger. Um, I would say curse words and my mom would be like, no, you cannot say that. And I'm like, but who said? Like, who is the authority on saying, like, not these words? Right. So I had also a period where I was flicking everybody off for a while because I was like, <laughs> who decided that finger? Like, yeah. I didn't get a memo. Is it in the Bible? Like, no one, who said? Who said that that's <laughs> who bad? Said? So that's always been my thing. Or when people try to, you know, combat you with information or something, then they're like, you know, they say. It's like, who's they? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think I just have that problem with like authority and kind of the blanket or censorship they try to put on things. I don't believe that we should be censored. And Stephanie's also an Aries rising, right? That's also true. Yeah. So that's also (laughs) where we get the sharp shooting, you know, just like let them have it. Let them have it. It was bad from day one. I forgot about (laughs) the Aries place. (laughs) Yeah. It's like double fire. Yeah. But we love you for that. We love that. I do. I do. (laughs) So did you write like rebellious teen poetry? Um, So I had one of those like black and white composition notebooks with like magazine cutout stuff or like stickers and symbols of anarchy and whatever and like, you know, all these band photos and I would carry it everywhere. And yeah, I would write what I thought was maybe song lyrics because I was always really into music. But then, yeah, or poems. It was just kind of like free verse, free writing. And I did that. And it was like always my dream. I was like, I'm going to move to New York City and I'm going to write for like Rolling Stone or some like really dope magazine. Uh, That's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to live that city life. Uh, now you're out, doing but. it in Cleveland, living <laughs> right. that city I'm life. I'm doing it in Cleveland. That's true. You're right. You're right. So yeah. when you listen to music, are you like mostly listening to the words? I do listen to the words a lot. Like I love certain lines. Like I will love a song because of the lines in it. Mm-hmm. Obviously the melody and all that and the instruments, even the instruments used. Like if I hear a song with violin, it's like game over. I'm like, oh, I fucking this song. that violin <laughs> that violin I it's one of the, I don't know something about the violin um but yeah I do listen to the lyrics a lot like some songs obviously I listen to I'm like got a great beat I don't care they could be saying anything like eat some ketchup fuck your daddy like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care um but I do listen to lyrics a lot so I was really I went through my you know phase I'm still obviously in that phase if you look at my Spotify but like of like the conscious hip hop movement oh yeah. I so love. like Common early Kanye Talib Kweli most of all that stuff yeah 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 so you've always felt like an activist to me like a revolutionary so I know that you're really you know opinionated right we just mm-hmm. talked about that so if you think about like what's going on in the world or whatever what would you say is like that one thing that pisses you off or that like that's kind of like your passion like what you really feel most connected to or you feel like requires the most change right now uh, I think institutions and like the system at as a whole yeah. like all these systems the public schooling system the prison like the judicial system um, all these systems that have been put into place based off this document that was written by white slave owners all those years ago right um, doesn't make sense for the world we live in now mm-hmm. um, also fuck those guys but <laughs> just yeah, to get that. that out there <laughs> but it it's true like why have we not changed these systems why have we not eradicated the things that don't work why are we still letting these plays by politicians and businesses and corporations control our life it's falling apart we're seeing that it's not working we're literally killing the planet we are liter- we are in a race war like i don't care what people say it's mm-hmm. true when you've got the police system, uh, you know, all that enforcement out here just killing people based off skin color, based off neighborhood, based off wrong place, wrong time, it just making it, it's ridiculous. Um, so I think definitely, I mean, it even starts in the public schooling system. That's why, you know, it's 
I really love the work I do in the nonprofit because we are going into those schools where they've taken out arts programs and we're teaching kids poetry and, you know, teaching them how to give truth to power through their words. Tell us a little bit more about that. What are you doing exactly? How are you involved with like these young people and in the schools and everything? Yeah, I'd love to plug it. Um, So the nonprofit I work for is 12 Literary Arts. It is a literary incubator here in Cleveland um, for poets, writers, um, even performance artists. We focus largely on poets and writers of color, so making sure they have workshops. And when we, um, residencies. So the residencies that we have these people submit and choose um, to participate in are always getting a stipend. So they are getting paid to be there. They are not paying us to be there. So it's really important to build that equity for people to be paid for their art. We always make sure our artists are getting paid like really fair um, amounts. And then a lot, most of what we do um, is we have these workshops. We go into the local high schools um, and just kick it with the kids for a period or two and get them to write, get them to perform, get them to compete in poetry slams. We also then, it's kind of like a, to use, not use a better word, I mean pipeline, to get them to our after school fellowship where they learn extensively about poetry, um, they learn about politics in a sense, you know, they do become sort of like these activists that are using their words as their weapon. So you're working with people that, young people in high school, but mm-hmm. also out people that are not in right. high school Right, we work with longer. adult writers as well. Okay, Yeah, awesome. so it's, you know, having these students, having them do, and we transport them to the fellowship, we feed them, you know, it's very much like we want everybody to have access to a program like this. They don't, youth don't ever have to pay. Um, And then, you know, moving them into upper ranks within the organization and then moving them, helping them transition into adult writers who then we do also have programming for. So it's dope. I love it. Yeah. (laughs) So we know that you're, you're also a tarot reader, Mm -hmm. right? So what do you feel like is the magic of tarot? Like, why would someone want to come, you know, have a reading? What are some of the things you feel like you've seen with your clients that have been able to, like, cause that, like, shift? W- tell us a little bit about the magic of tarot. Yeah, um, tarot, I think it's a great divination tool because we're always like, you know, send me a sign, send me a symbol when yeah. we're, we're trying to make things happen or we're thinking about decisions um, or major shifts in our lives. And tarot offers that sign, offers that symbol, um, (laughs) offers that sign, offers that symbol, um, gives us something to visualize or to look at and say, okay, I understand that. Like, I understand why this is happening now. I understand what transitions or what areas of my life I may need to focus on. You know, I think people... You have to say like, oh, I'm a visual learner. I'm a hands-on, but there, there is nothing about using the sense that isn't necessary to help you like realize what work you need to do. So I think the visual, visualization um, of tarot is really key in what makes it like an effective form of divination, even a tool for mental health. I really think. Yeah. Um, I always tell my clients too. I'm like, buy your own deck. You know, you're still going to want to get readings from other people. Like, yeah. I have a reading with a different reader tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's not, you know, I still want you to come see me. Yeah. But get your own deck. You know, pull a card a day or when you're stressed or before a big transition or meeting or event in your life. And just to kind of center yourself, see where you're at, uh, maybe focus, give you a second to, like, pause and reflect. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think tarot is an effective form of magic, but also a real-life effective tool as yeah. well. So I know that sometimes, depending upon the reader, they like to be more optimistic Mm -hmm. with their delivery. And then we also know that tarot can also deliver like the smackdown, too. So what's your style? Do you like to focus on the optimism or if they're if the cards are showing that shit's about to hit the fan? Do you deliver that message? And if so, how how do you do that? So I do. I deliver the message that maybe, you know, shit is about to hit the fan. But I always read the cards, too, as like, you know, they're there's an offering of a solution or yeah. here's where you need to focus your energy. So when shit does hit the fan, right. you're prepared yeah. or, you know, here's what maybe you should, the perspective or um, position you should take when shit does hit the fan. So I try to think about the tarot reading as like a story. How do all these cards come together to make maybe this outcome or whatever, this challenge or not even challenge, but like major event in your mm-hmm. life um, or whatever's coming up, how, how, 
can you work with that energy? How can you not turn it into something negative? You know, even when the tower comes up, people get the tower or death. It's like Mm -hmm. death's one of my favorite cards in the deck. Mm -hmm. Um, That sense of like change, like cutting off the dead limbs so something beautiful can grow. Um, I think death is only scary in this very Western mindset of linear timelines when we Mm -hmm. know we don't live in a linear timeline. Um, Life, if you believe that there's anything after, you know, it's lights out, that it's cyclical. So that's what I like to think of when I do tarot readings. It's like, how does this all play in a cyclical kind of story of what's happening for you right now? So you mentioned imagery and mm-hmm. storytelling and how you use that with tarot. But I'm wondering, like, does that play into your poetry? Because it seems like that th- there's a crossover there. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think at now you saying that, it makes me, it like I had, not to use an Oprah word, but like an aha moment. I was like, oh shit, I'm just a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Even in the way I talk with tarot is mm-hmm. a tool to like help me tell the story for somebody else to reflect it back at them. Like poetry is storytelling. Activism is storytelling to come to, you know, an agreement or a solution for a problem. Um, so thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it does cross over. You know, a lot of my poetry, too, talks about some of these things. Or even when I do a tarot reading, I will look at maybe the imagery or even sometimes I'll read up on the explanation from the guidebook just to see what jumps out because sometimes when you look at a card for yourself you're like no that's what it says so sometimes I do like to go back to like the guidebook (laughs) and see the keywords and be like oh okay this is what it's trying to tell me Mm -hmm. um but yeah that will influence my poetry sometimes before I sit down to write I pull a tarot card um And it helps me kind of zone in on maybe this is what I should be focusing on or see if I can pull inspiration from this, whatever's happening in my life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. (laughs) So what do you see, you know, just kind of where you've been and where you are? What are some of the things that you want to see grow or, you know, like where do you see yourself in five years? What are some of your dreams? Um, I would definitely like to be a published author. Mm -hmm. I would like to have chapbooks of poetry published um i would like to do a book tour just because i am a sagittarian so i want to travel and if somebody else can foot that bill (laughs) um but also just to be able to meet people from all over and see like what my audience or readers would look like and who knows what kind of doors that could open um just to people and experiences and be able to make change in the world so definitely that um i would like to be able to sustain myself as a writer and tarot reader, which I am doing right now. I mean, I work for the nonprofit, but I would like to be able to travel more. Mm -hmm. Um, So even if I could do that through the nonprofit work, that would be dope, which I do a little bit. So, Um, but yeah, just not really have having a home base, but being more able to adapt and flow um, through different cities, different countries. So I'm just putting that out there on this full moon. <laughs> yeah. Um, as an aside. <laughs> but yeah, to see my kids, you know, happy, healthy, so far so good. Just they're turning in, you know, they're getting into that preteen phase. And my oldest son's voice is starting to change. And I'm Aww. like, <sighs> yeah, he's like big. I can't pick him up anymore, but he could pick me up. It's like we're at that phase. Um, just to see them well adjusted and make it through those like angsty teenage years alive and unscathed and with not as many broken hearts. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful intention for this full moon. I forgot (laughs) to mention at the beginning of this that we are interviewing Stephanie on the Sag full moon and she's a Sag. So, so y'all know, I think I have a stellium in Sag and Scorpio. We'll have to check it out. I forget. (laughs) I like it. Um, but I do have... A question about um, how you got into kind of politics or how you kind of realized that you're a revolutionary was there like a current event going on when you were younger that you were like I gotta get my hands in there <laughs> um I think it was maybe yeah 9-11 was one um and people might you say 9-11 it's like oh so then I went and joined the forces and like because I wanted to protect my country but I was like no 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 something's not right here so they're not telling us the whole truth and then it was noticing like how you know throughout the years and decades and centuries it was like targeting groups of people 
So like originally, you know, they targeted African Americans. We're gonna make you our slave. They targeted the indigenous people, like get off this land that is yours. Then, you know, what 9-11 felt to me was like, oh, we have to shift focus to a new group. We're gonna target the Muslim, the Arabic, because people in America don't know shit about the rest of the world. We are, we are the most ignorant of it. Everybody else knows about us. They know about each other. And we're just like, nope, if it's not American history, we don't care. Um, or like, you know, learning about World War II. We're taught that one because America right. was like a hero. We're taught that. the American version right. of the story. Right. And like what you're saying, like there's this whole thing going on in Sudan and like right. no one's talking about it. And why are they not talking about it? Well, the very, you know, why our media is not covering their most, it's a Muslim country. It's a black country. It's a poor country. They don't care. Um, so things like that, just like understanding that what, was happening what I had thought was happening was like yeah turning people into sheep like that distrust of authority that distrust of the government and the systems put in place um I think just always being conscious of that and maybe it was something like you know my love for hip-hop and hearing that story but then seeing something different reflected in like the news or feeling like just seeing my own community like the city of Lorraine like they you know it's a heavily um, Latinx community and to see like the devastation and the decline that would happen and the information we wouldn't get at schools and noticing how our school was treated different or people from our community were treated different. I think just that knowledge of the unjust ways of the world was. So did you just start being like more outspoken and like challenging authority or did you like go to any kind of like protests or anything like that? Um, I went I think I started challenging authority. That was more so it. Like teachers, um, understanding why. There was one time I called a radio station, if you remember when Chama 92.3 oh, was yeah. a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they were giving away Christina Aguilera tickets. My best friend and I really wanted to go. So I was like, we're going to call. Like we're always sitting here listening to the radio. We're going to wait. We're going to call. So I called and it was like, I had it. I thought I had it. We timed it out perfect. Um, and then they're like, oh, no, this girl just won from Strongsville. And I was like, Strongsville? So I'm on the radio. I was like, how come nobody from, like, my community or, like, I technically said my hood. I was like, how come nobody from, nobody from my hood ever wins? Nobody from Lorraine. No Puerto Ricans. Like, and my friend recorded this on tape because then they <laughs> played hilarious. it. Oh, my god! And gosh. so I'm just, like, yelling at this DJ. That's awesome. And I was like, but Kelsey from Strongsville. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like, 11 years old. <laughs> so Christina just brought all this shit together. Yeah. Yeah, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> that was it. That's the horse I was <laughs> I was riding in on. <laughs> Genie in a bottle. Like, let's go. <laughs> it didn't take much. It didn't. It take was much. just ready to come I out. I think yeah. it was just yeah. I don't know if it was. I don't even think it had anything to do with my parents. They're not like that. <laughs> You can't I mean, blame your parents. No. My right. grandpa, I mean, he would tell me stories. He was a soldier here in the U.S. because he only had one eye, so he was never sent overseas, but during World War II. Um, and sometimes he would just tell me the stories about how people would call him a dumb Puerto Rican, but he's, like, worked at NASA. He's, like, the smartest man I know. Wow. Um, but just because, uh, yeah, he's, like, electrician mastermind. Um, but just because of, like where he came from yeah. or his name or the language he spoke you yeah. know wow. and I was just like that's not right so yeah. growing up knowing that part yeah. too it's just like mm -hmm. yeah that leads me to this question so um for those that um, haven't listened to our podcast before we talk a lot about the dark goddess mm -hmm. so <laughs> this is a question Stephanie so we all have this side to us that's a little darker mm -hmm. um that maybe we love or not so tell us a little bit about what you think, you know, is something that comes from your dark side. And then also tell us a little bit something that you feel like on the lighter end, you know, you're amazing at. So kind of okay. give us two aspects. Some of my light and shadow. Yeah. Got it. Uh, we'll start shadow. So I, I think the parts of me that come from that more shadow side, um, I can sort of manipulate situations to get what I want. Okay, uh, so I'm going to have you pause. <laughs> it don't have to be sort of. Just give it to us okay, straight. Okay, all right, all right. So I, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's that dark goddess in you calling my dark goddess out. I see you. Um, I love you, though. Um, but, like, yeah, I, I definitely do 
play situations or people to make things happen that I want to. I also like to now call it the power of manifestation, <laughs> but you know, um, I, you know, that sexual side of me right. that is like nothing is off topic or taboo. Like, let's talk about it. Let's check it out. Let's yeah. experiment. Um, I've kind of been that way since I was younger as well, like seeing sex as a tool of power. Yeah. And I utilized it very much in my teenage years. Okay. Shout out all y'all dudes. Uh, (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) You're welcome for getting some of this power. But yeah, like sometimes people wanted to play that game, like the number game. I'm like, if I tell you my number, you're going to look at me different. (laughs) (laughs) Real different. (laughs) Um, so like that was always part of my shadow and I never saw it as something I necessarily wanted to change. Yeah. But other people would tell me, oh, that's something you have to change. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but why? Like, I like it. It gives me that sense of like being a powerful woman, Mm -hmm. um, you know, being in my feminine power, feeling like I'm making these choices for me. Um, you know, that shadow self says fuck it to everything apologizes for nothing Mm -hmm. she needs no permission she doesn't need forgiveness like if i've wronged you i'm always like god that sucks i'm sorry but at the same time i'm like it was a something i had to do at that time i'm sorry if the collateral damage was hurting other people Mm -hmm. but like i had to survive that's my shadow self she is resilient she is going to survive literally at all costs right yeah so Sorry, y'all. I love that. I love that. Like, just that sense of empowerment. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to do what I want right right now. But then I feel like you don't always come off as, like, sharp and harsh and self-serving. Because you have a moon in Libra. Yeah. So you do know how to, like, either apologize afterwards or you do know how to mediate also and compromise. I'm a big crier. I bet nobody knows that. I will literally cry I cried yesterday all day. I was telling y'all. But, like, I'll cry from a song that comes on. I'll cry during any Pixar movie. Name it. I've cried during it. Um, Anything, like, thinking about something. You know, just feeling overwhelmed. I'm big, big, big. If I get frustrated, I'm crying. And I kind of used to, like, hate that. Because I was like, oh, it's a sign of weakness. And I ain't no weak bitch. But, Mm -hmm. like, now I'm just like, no, it's just, like, I feel everything. So it's got to come out. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a release. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, that's, I think my Libra moon is that. I am very, more sensitive. Like, I do want people to like me. So, Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the Libra moon comes out first, and then that Sag fire, and then you're like, oh, okay. (laughs) But you already like me by the time it comes out. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, I mean, obviously, wanting to help people. Um, that's a big thing. Really being, wanting to make sure that like I'm nurturing and I'm a good mother and not just a good mother to my own children, but any child I come across, I always try to engage them. And, um, I love children. Like they're the future. That's why we're doing all this shit. So (laughs) what, which dark goddess do you feel most resonant with Um, and why? That's a good question. And to be honest, like sometimes I don't think I've thought about it as much as I probably should. Yeah. So maybe I need to do some homework. But I, I am like the ones we've been researching. Yeah. I feel like Medusa for sure. Mm-hmm. The snakes, obviously. Yeah. I, so I have this thing with snakes. Right. Um, and just her story of like, you know, being, you know, trying to be serving, trying to be of service and be divine and work in the temple. And then, um, you know, I was a child, I was a blank slate and then the world came and essentially raped me, Poseidon, the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and there was a lot of trauma and a lot of shit I had to go through, um, as a young girl trying to navigate it without any sort of adult supervision, so to say. Mm-hmm. My dad just, I think cultural language barriers prevented that. My parents were divorced. He had a new family. My mom, a single mom. So she was working all the time and then just trying to do her. She was just out there dating, doing her thing, kicking it. Um, So I had to take on a lot by myself and understand the world a lot by myself. So I think that's why. (laughs) So my friend Blue June, she's got this awesome podcast called the Mystic Witch Podcast. Mm -hmm. And she's a tarot reader. And she always asks all of her guests, which tarot card do you identify with and why? I like that question. I would have to say... I always want to say the empress because I'm like, oh, but it's actually the emperor. 
he I've done a few readings where it's like, okay, here's your higher self card. Um, and so when I whenever I pull that, it or I need to almost like a reminder of my power, it's always the emperor. And I'm like, do I have big dick energy? <laughs> 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 or now they call it big clit energy, which is Oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like that. But it does feel like, yeah, he pops up a lot. And I don't know, I'm like, oh, such a father, like leader figure. I'm like, ugh, yeah. he's no fun. Yeah, it's yeah. masculine but energy. It is very masculine energy. So I have a follow-up question on tarot. So when you do a lot of readings maybe it's like in a week or in a day do you find that there's like similar themes in your clients and does it often sometimes kind of pertain to what's going on in your life um I don't ever think it really pertains but there is to me more so because I try to like take the ego and self out of it when I'm doing readings of Um, course but there is sometimes like a synchronicity or a theme of the day and I'm like is that just maybe a collective, like people who are in tune, you know, obviously I, especially in the space I'm reading at Coven now, um, it's mostly women or femme identifying, um, or, you know, LGBTQ individuals. So it's never really like messy, like uh, cis, however the hell you say that, (laughs) hetero, (laughs) like men. Um, so I think sometimes when we're more intuitive, there is that sense of like, oh, this is happening in that intuitive collective. Mm-hmm. Um, these are the themes that are maybe more so popping up. Sometimes people will get the same cards. Like I'll pull the same card like multiple readings throughout the day or yeah. an event. That happens to me a lot. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. I think it is, maybe it's that. It's like, oh, here's what's happening in the collective. Here's the yeah. medicine for people today. Mm-hmm. It's almost like if you could... You know, you think about talk shows, like they had a theme or something they were talking about, or even like uh, you go to religious service, there's a theme. So maybe even with like these different healing things, there seems to be like a theme. And since you can't broadcast it and you're doing individual, it's like, but everybody needed to hear this. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I think of it. (laughs) So what do you feel like has been one of your biggest challenges? Like, you know how like everyone has something that they're working on, whether it's health or finances or relationship What is something that you feel like your soul's working on uh, right now? It is motivating myself to do stuff, to like stay on top of things, to not let, you know, maybe if I'm tired or if I just don't feel like it, um, kind of deter me from doing what I want to do. Yeah. Um, Because like I am sort of self-employed. I mean, the nonprofit I work with, but I work from home a lot or it's traveling to different meetings. Um, it's not this very set, you know, nine to five schedule. It's kind of all over the place, um, which I love. But then, yeah, it does allow some days where I'm just at home working from home. And how do I make the most of my time um, and trying to make healthier choices? Yeah. And staying on top of like, did I drink enough water? Like the yeah. very basics. Like yeah. sometimes I feel like I can be good at that more abstract stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to like making sure I make my appointments for doctor, dentist, all that, um, making sure these bills are paid, like the very foundational, basic, mundane shit we have to do because we live in this capitalistic society. I'm not good at that. I'm working on that. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing like stuff that you're working on and everything is there like a big victory in your life that you've maybe like worked really hard and something that you feel like you could say that you triumphed yeah that's Um, what I was gonna go like where where do you feel on fire yeah I feel on fire with my parenting um I feel like not to brag but like my kids are pretty dope like they're very emotionally mature they're very intelligent you know, nine and 11 and they read at like a high school level. Yeah. Um, they're just, and they're just good people. Like they understand the injustices of the world. Like I am trying to raise very conscious individuals and also, you know, they're both male. So I try to raise them to take into account the struggles of females. Like we, I talk to them about periods and like, you know, what happens if you see one of the girls, like, Gio, you're going to reach that age. Girls are going to be starting their period in your class. It's like if she gets up and she's got a stain on the back of her shorts, you know, and you hear people making fun of her, like stand up to, for that, for her, maybe offer her your little hoodie or jacket to tie around her waist or offer, you know, mm-hmm. I was like, it's 
so I try to make sure that they're conscious and they very much are, especially about the world and all that. And then I think with my job, like I think in the nonprofit sector, I'm uh, the special programs coordinator. So a lot of the adult programming is what I do. Um, And I love it. I love the people that I get to meet and making projects go and ideas. And I feel like I get to bring my like revolutionary spirit and that sense of like healing and spirituality into this job as well, because the people I work with are also on that wavelength. Um, So that's dope. I feel like I'm on a team where we're making like real change in like young people's lives and like we can really do some shit. So get hip to 12 because we're basically going to put Cleveland on the literary map. How do people find out (laughs) more about it? Um, You can go to 12 Arts. So it's the word 12, T-W-E-L-V-E, arts.org. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, how can people kind of get in touch with you and how can people kind of follow along with what you've got going on? Um, you can follow me at Instagram. I'm a big story sharer. <laughs> she is. I am. I don't know. It's something that just gave me a platform, like a megaphone. I you're, was like, dope. <laughs> you're just a storyteller. They're it's, entertaining. Hey, there you go. <laughs> hey. Um, but yeah, you can follow me at S T period Janese, my last name, which is spelled G I N E S E. And then, um, it'll be in the show notes too. It'll, yeah, it'll be in the show notes. And then I have a website. Um, you can book tarot readings. I have my bio on there. Um, it's just Stephanie Janae. Say Stephanie spelled the regular old P H I E at the end way. Um, that le- same last name Janae. Say again. Dot com. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And you're doing tarot readings at Coven. Yeah. So every Friday and Saturday from three to eight, um, you can come into Coven. I'm chilling there, hanging out, probably reading some of the books or messing with their decks. Um, but yeah, I'm doing readings there. Um, I can do other events. So if you have ideas for events, weddings, I'll do a bar mitzvah. I don't care. Like, I, I fly like, me out. <laughs> I'll go wherever. I love um, seeing the poetry samples on your Instagram yeah, story. Like yeah. from Stephanie's poetry events. It's really awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I love to share my poetry. I'm also trying to publish my first like full collection. So if you know somebody, if you are somebody, <laughs> hit me up, check out my samples on my Instagram and let me know. I hope <laughs> Jupiter's listening. On Jupiter, this full moon. <laughs> Jupiter, Jupiter. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, just trying to write, read tarot, live my quote, best, unquote, life. best life. Absolutely. Yeah. You are. Thanks. You guys are too. Yeah. We now are because we get to do this podcast together. Yeah. And connect awesome. with all of you. So Super dope. <laughs> So thank you so much, Stephanie, for opening up and sharing with us a lot about your life, your journey, what you got going on now, and your hopes for the future. Is there anything you want to end off with? Um, I just want to tell everybody to do better every day. It's a journey. Um, It's not a straight line. It's a spiral. Do the best you can. If all you did today was get up and fucking brush your teeth and take a shower that's an accomplishment so give yourself a kiss on the shoulder and spread that to everybody else in the world times are dark now but if we combat that with just being awesome and loving each other we can probably most likely hopefully change the world so let's do that shit if not we're just going to burn down the systems viva la revolucion (laughs) bye awesome so that concludes another (laughs) another episode a special episode of the fallen fruit thank you so much for tuning in and look for us on itunes like us on instagram and please share this podcast with anyone you think would enjoy thank you peace bye